Uh, now, as you know, uh, this uh, 2018 edition of the web conference, the first of this new name, uh, is almost uh, over, and we will uh, uh, give. Yeah, Fabian is <laughs> trying to say something. Uh, we, we will uh, uh, the the two. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so now the uh, 2019 edition is already on its rails, and uh, you have maybe discovered them uh, at their booths uh, uh, on the exhibition and li living area. Uh, now you will uh, be able to see them on stage after this video presentation of the web conference 2019 in San Francisco. So the web, you know, there was this kind of pent up demand. People didn't necessarily realize it, but there was this demand. And as soon as there was a single system that got, you know, wide acceptance, it's like you have 20, 30, 40 years of ideas and ambitions for what you can do with online commerce and connecting people and wikis and you know, online collaboration, etc. suddenly found this expression so i think a lot of the reason the web exploded is that it kind of allowed and enabled all of these things that you know were in the in the works to suddenly try to find expression kind of a dam bursting CERN does physics not computing the dam bursting uh, uh, analogy is is not entirely wrong. Um, although there was a lot of work being done uh, out there at large and, and certainly inside a physics laboratory, it, there was no, no way that we were going to get full-scale uh, resource support for something that was totally accessory to the mainstream of what, was doing, what we were doing at CERN. So it had to get out with a, with a project like the web where uh, nobody understands you because the the only way to make people understand what it is about is to show it to them to make them experience it and i said look this as i click here when i let go of the mouse button that page is coming from hawaii and so he looked at this and i saw his eyes widen and I clicked another one and another page came up with another bunch of dinosaurs. And then he pushed me aside and grabbed the mouse and began clicking himself. <laughs> when the web came out and you could just very easily with some very simple handwritten in the early days, markup language, HTML, uh, you could make a page and you could make put a picture on the page and make links to other pages. And it was immediately a kind of a revelation if you wrote a uh, web page and it adhered to the HTML standard, it could be read by anyone who had a browser that could read the HTML standard. And that meant that very quickly we had competing browsers, we had competing websites, we had an open ecosystem that anyone could join. The core question is what is the value that defines the web? And my, my belief is that the value is neutrality. And I think the future of the web as this neutral platform will depend on the extent to which uh, policymakers remain committed to that neutrality by resisting the dominance of market players um, who would uh, compromise that. We need to repair or complement or supplement the infrastructure so as to preserve the basic experience by content providers and users and application providers of this as a neutral platform that encourages innovation and creativity open to all. In the 90s, when everyone was looking for ways of sharing information, the idea was it was all meant to be for the good. It was to open up knowledge. It was to enable communication between people across the world. Everything was all about what we could do for the good. And that feels now as if it's turned on us. It, the big question is how do we protect ourselves from the bad things without losing all the good things?
And this, to me, is why the web conference is so important. You have to look at it from many different angles, the, the economics and regulatory systems, the law, uh, philosophy, politics. We need to be discussing how we take the web forward in such a way that it's good for humanity. It is working. I'm waiting for Ricardo to join us. And he's showing that I should continue, so I'll do it. Uh, welcome to the Web Conference 2019. Uh, my name is Leila Zia, um, and along with Ricardo Baeza Yates, we are the general co chairs for the 2019 edition of the conference. Um, and of course, we have been working with an amazing team of people for the past two and, two and a half years to bring this conference for you in 2019 in San Francisco. Um, so the date for the conference is May 13 to 17, 2019. The conference location is San Francisco. For those of you who know the city, is going to be in Hyatt uh, at Embarcadero, close to the water. And we will come to the 2019 edition uh, at a moment that we will be celebrating the 30th anniversary of the web. We also, when we get together next time, we will be celebrating the moment where more than 50% of the world's population has got access to internet and they have connected to the rest of the world. This is a milestone that will be reached by the end of 2018, November 2018 to be more specific. So as we pass these two milestones, um, basically the 30th anniversary of the web and a world in which more than 50% of the pe people will have the opportunity to be connected, we want to use the opportunity for 2019 to step back, to step back as a community and think about where we want to take our world. The, the, wo the road that we have come so far and the place that we want to create for ourselves, but also for the future generations. And we have tried to take this message and reflect it for everything that we do for 2019 as much as possible. I'm not going to go through the details, but we're mainly going to focus on how to build a more inclusive and open web, a web for good. And this is reflected in the keynotes that we, we will bring uh, for you to the program, but also in pretty much every aspect of the program, including the call for paper, which is, by the way, up on our website where you see the link to it at the end of um, this talk. And now I'm going to pass it to Ricardo to talk about the fun stuff. So thank you, Leila. And if the technical part is not enough, if you haven't been in San Francisco, it's a wonderful city. Uh, it can be chilly, but you have to be prepared. It's a nice view. Uh, at night, one of the landmarks of the city, the Golden Gate, uh, most people have seen it, and it's in our logo. Culture, for example, Chinatown. We'll, you can walk there from the conference location. Just by coincidence, after the conference in the weekend, Sunday, there is the Bay to Breakers run, if you like to run, and it's a fun run because you can run with a costume. Uh, if you want to do something else at that day, you can go and do some uh, checking in the Moor Woods. And if you don't see the relation, this very important relation here, because in that woods were filmed the last series of the Planet of the Apes, but not with the Y in the left. 
then national sorry, uh, World Heritage Site, Yosemite National Park. If you haven't been there, it's amazing. And if you like wine like me, Napa and Sonoma are close. And I will not argue which one is better because I have my own opinions. So if you want to go a bit further, you can go to the Monterey Aquarium. This is one of the most amazing sites there. A lot of uh, jellyfish. So please come next year and we are waiting for you.